Kesha Lambert, founder of Kesha Lambert Photography. We are a husband and wife run wedding and portrait photography business based out of New York. We have three associate photographers and together we photograph 60 to 70 weddings annually throughout the New York City tri-state area, all over the country and all over the world. I have personally photographed hundreds of weddings. I am a Sony artisan of imagery. I am a lawyer admitted to practice in New York and I'm also a mom of three amazing boys. Today, I'm gonna share all about posing with you, from clean and classic to push the envelope wow factor posing. I'm gonna share a few quick tips and best practices for how you can pull the most out of your clients and also create the types of images that they will want to put on their walls. The types of poses and photographs that will make mom and dad happy and the types that will make them stop and stare and make their jaws drop. Get ready to learn all about posing with Kesha. Welcome to Posed. This class is not about sharing rules to live by. What I'm going to share with you today are best practices and tips that you can apply while working with your clients using the people, the opportunities, and things that present to you in the moment to craft beautiful poses. The first prong to my approach to posing is information. Information is king. And I'll share with you in just a moment how much information plays into not just the client relationship at large, but posing in particular. So the first question we want to ask ourselves is, what do you know? What do I know about the clients that I'm working with? At the start of a relationship, that might not be very much. If we have a client that we receive through an existing relationship, like a family referral or friend referral, and we already know something about them, that's great. But in many instances, when we're working with clients for the first time, we know very little. But still, we want to make that first assessment. What do we know? We know their names, where they're from. We know how they sound because we've spoken to them. We want to make that initial assessment. When we meet the client for the first time, we also want to ask ourselves, what do you see? Observation is a, an important part of the information phase of the process. So what do we see about their countenance and disposition? Are they comfortable in their own skin? What do we see and observe about their relationship and connection? Are they awkward? Are they into PDA? Are they reserved and conservative in their displays of affection? What do we see about their personal style, about the phrases they use and how they sound? Observation is an important piece to the puzzle. So now that we've assessed what we know and what we see, we have this baseline bit of information about the people that we're going to work with, how do we gather additional information? Here are a few things that you can start doing right now. The first is ask them for their social media handles. 
if they're on Instagram and if they're willing to share with you and they're not private or even if they are private and they are open to uh, sharing that information, ask them for their handles and check them out. You can learn so much about the way a person sees themselves, what they like, what they're into simply by looking at their top nine posts. Dig a little deeper if you have time. Another thing you can do is ask lots of questions. This is the part where we stop talking and we talk less and listen more. Ask open-ended questions and give them the floor. People love to share about themselves. All you need to do is open the window for it to happen. If you're an introvert like myself, use forms to ask those questions. I love using questionnaires. And when you're using a questionnaire, lose the basic questionnaire and ask your curious question. So for me, that looks like, what is your sun sign? What are your pet peeves? What is the first thing you notice about somebody when you meet them? What's the last song that you listen to in the car on the way over? There's a movie about your life. Who's playing you? What actors are playing you? And what's the title of that movie? Ask the questions that you would be curious about when you're getting to know someone. And you can do that over the phone, in person, make face-to-face -face connection, or you can also use forms. And it's just a great tool. It gives you a great tool to pull from when you're working with your clients. Request to see photos. Request to see snapshots, personal snapshots. This is similar to the social media accounts. But in this instance, we're being intentional about also adding an information gathering component to the photo. So when you ask a for a photo, ask them to explain why they love this photo. Ask them to put into their own words what is special about this photo to them. Ask them to share photos that are tied to a memory or a fond moment, and you'll learn so much about your clients. Another thing you can do, which may make some people cringe, is follow their vision boards, their Pinterest boards. If they have a design deck for their wedding, in the case of a wedding client, or if they just simply started pinning things that inspire them or that they love, it's a great window into their minds and how they think and what appeals to them. The next prong in my approach to posing is the warm up. One of the number one things that I hear from clients is, I don't know how to pose. I'm awkward. Everyone looks great in your portfolio. I don't know how to do that. Will you help us? For many sessions, we have to help our clients to get out of their heads, be present, and simply enjoy themselves. And so the warm-up is a great way to do that. Here are a few quick things that you can do to help get your clients out of their heads and get them forgetting about the camera and simply enjoying the experience, immersing themselves in the session. Number one is that you can bring music. And this is where that information gathering component comes in handy. If you've learned a few things about your clients, then chances are you might know what kind of music they like. You might even have a few favorite songs. So you can arrive to your session with a playlist that is tailored and fit to your clients, their vibe, their energy, what gets them hyped up or what gets them smoothed out and relaxed. Tell a joke, have a few dad jokes in your back pocket or riddles. Riddles are a great way to start conversation. You can also elicit a cool reaction when they have, you have that aha moment for the punchline of the joke or the outcome of the riddle, have a few of those lined up. You don't need to be a comedian, but you can share a joke that you've heard or a riddle that you've heard. Keep it appropriate to the client. Again, information gathering is ties in here. You'll know what kind of jokes or what kind of riddles might land well with your client. Another thing that I like to do is fake them out. What I mean by faking your client out is telling them that it's a test shot and shooting through that moment anyway. Even if it actually is testing, even if you're warming up, even if you're just checking things out, there's something about telling them that you're testing that lets them let their guard down. They go on to doing what the in-between things that they would be doing. So here we have Andrea checking her email and Peter's hanging out in the um, other nook that we placed in him, him in. But the key here is that they become relaxed. They're a little less in their head. They, they feel 
comfortable because they, they know they're not on yet, but you shoot through that. This is just a test shooting through your test shots, telling them that we're not starting yet so that they can just kind of not worry about the camera and just kind of be present. Another tool that I like to use is movement. Use movement, get your clients moving. And here, walk through. Perfect. Whether it's walking, uh, having a little race, twirling, whatever you do, get them moving and you'll see that it helps to get their guards down. It helps them to become immersed in the experience as opposed to thinking about the lens. And the last tip that I'd like to ch share is recommend an experience based location. Make this session experiential. So that could look like choosing to shoot at a theme park or getting bikes on uh, and shooting on a bike path. Encourage them to bring activity based or activity related props, balls, jump ropes, just throwing a couple of things out there, but choose a location where your clients will be engaged in doing something and it will help them to forget about the photos and just be themselves. The third prong in my approach supposing is insurance. This is what I start with. These are important. Your safe shot. You want to get your insurance shot. These are the photos that are clean, classic, timeless. They are the client pleasers. They are the mom and dad pleasers. And the approach is pretty simple when it comes to getting your safe shots. These are the types of photos that can live throughout time and will look relevant and beautiful across the years. And so the formula for the insurance shot, the safe shot is simplicity. It should be flattering in posing. And when I say flattering, you're going to scan the, the clients for areas of tension. The most common areas are neck shoulder, lips, the mouth, you know, pursed lips, feet, ankles, wrist, fingers, scan quickly to see that they are, the body language looks natural and looks relaxed and tweak them as needed. Clean light. When I say that clean light, I mean, well executed light. It should be leave out the shadow play and just a nicely executed, well lit portrait. And the expression should be soft, joyful. So we're not slaying or giving sultry energy here. We're giving calm, we're giving joy in our expression. And that's my recipe for a safe shot. Time to play. Now that you've gathered information, you've gotten the clients warmed up, you've got your insurance shots done, now the window is open for you to push yourself creatively and nudge your clients to get on board with some of your more chance taking poses. Here is my blueprint of a pose, the anatomy of a pose, story, structure, execution, main characters, and supporting cast. In a pose, there should be a story an idea that you want to bring to life or information that you want to convey about your subjects. And this is where the information gathering component comes in handy. Again, when you have a baseline to pull from, then you'll be able to add a storytelling element to your poses, something that you want to pull out, be it a show of personality or something you want to tell about the client's connection structure. Now that we have an idea and a story that we want to tell, how do we frame it? Are we using the environment? Are we using elements in the environment? Are we using objects in people and things in the environment to pull this story together? So that could look like maybe we want the client to be holding something, or maybe we want them to be positioned apart from each other. Maybe we want one person to be lit in one way and another person to be lit in a silhouette. How do we want to structure and frame the scene to pull the story and the idea together? I'm using the environment whenever taking a storytelling approach to posing. You don't necessarily have to have the couple standing next to each other or touching. 
I have them placed in two different spots on the same wall. And I'm going to do a mixed lighting setup. I'm going to silhouette our gentleman, our groom, and I'm going to light the bride-to-be. In this case, I'm demoing an engagement session. So we're gonna light up um, Andrea and we're going to have Peter fall into the silhouette. And so I'm using a two light setup. Now, when it comes to posing, a lot of times couples will stand in front of you and you will see, the first thing you should do is scan the body for any areas of tension. And then I start to direct the tiny things. So I'm gonna start by asking Andrea to please shift your weight to the left leg, right, perfect. And she automatically fell into what I wanna see happen in a beautiful dress like this that has shape. And uh, I wanna see this hourglass figure come out, but we're gonna make it pop even more. Um, Andrea, I'd like you to take your right leg, your right knee, it's bent already. If you could point it towards the door while keeping your shoulders out towards the camera, perfect. Now we have this really beautiful hourglass happening. And just adjust the dress. There we go. Make sure we see all of this wonderfulness. Now, Andrea, if you could, this is another area that you can scan for tension. It shows up often. doesn't really look tense here, but hands tend to get balled up in the wrist and fingertips. So Andrew, if you could just loosen your fingers, you should, yep, let them kind of fall. And then I'm gonna have you take your right hand and rest it on your thigh, put a little, there we go. That creates a little separation between the body. We've got a little natural bend between her waistline and her elbow. And then we're gonna take this hand, and I'm, a lot of times I like to ask people to do small movements when they are posed. And this is to keep the body from looking and getting stiff. So what I'm gonna ask you to do with your left hand is when I start shooting, you're going to take that hand and lift it to your waist. You're gonna do that in real time when I say go. The other thing I'm gonna ask you to do is just lift your chin, turn it towards the door slowly, perfect, right there. Lift your chin up a little bit more and close your eyes. So Andrea, I need you to do two things when I say go. I want you to slowly open your eyes and then I want you to put your hand on your waist. That left hand, was it the left? Yes, the left. <laughs> All right, perfect. And Peter, Peter's gonna be in our silhouette. I have a A1 behind him with a blue gel on it. It's pointing towards the wall behind him, the door behind him. Peter, you did exactly what I need you to do. If you could just clasp your fingers, look straight at the wall in front of you and your chin up, perfect. Your feet, he's another area with, especially with the gents that you wanna look out for. He actually has his feet pretty straight, but Peter, if you could straighten them and point them right at the wall. For something for a strong pose, I want the feet pointing in the exact same direction. I want them to be symmetrical. A lot of times, you'll, Peter, if you could, stagger your feet wide. Like, yep, a lot of times when people stand, sometimes they tend to stand wide. We don't want that. So, Peter, go back to the way that we were. Perfect. All right. So, I'm going to take a low, wide angle on this. I have a TV on the wall when we're working in real environments. We have things to work around. We work in tight spaces, but we make it work. I'm gonna use as much of this wall as possible, so I'm shooting with a 16 to 35 millimeter. And I'm gonna take a low angle on this. So Andrea, just lift your chin a little bit more. And on my cue, you're going to lift your chin a little bit more. On my cue, you're gonna open your eyes slowly and put that hand on your waist, and go. Open your eyes. Andrea, point your elbow towards the door, so Put your hand square on your waist, yep, and point your elbow really sharply towards the door. That's it. And the next component is execution. Once we know what story we're trying to tell and how we want to structure it in terms of lighting, in terms of objects that we want to use, then how will we pull it all together and pull it off? How will we get it done? So that means that we're thinking about our lighting setup. That means we're thinking about positioning and we're thinking about what we have available to work with. In every pose, there are main characters and supporting cast, at least one main character. And in the case of a couple, it could be both parts of the couple together or it could be the individuals, we might want to draw attention to a guest. In the case of a wedding day, your main character could be the wedding party or could be someone else. Whoever the main character is, it's the person or persons that we want the viewer's eyes to be drawn to first. Your supporting cast helps to 
pull this all together. Your supporting cast can be people or objects that help to draw the viewer's eye to your main characters. And the supporting cast also plays the role of helping to pull the story together. So they convey information about our characters, they convey information about the idea, and they help to pull the scene together. The next prong in my approach to posing is art direction. Art direction is important because this is where you as the photographer carve out the scene in front of you to fit the concept that you are trying to execute. This is where you as a photographer observe and scan the scene and put the pieces together so that it all comes to life. And so here are seven quick tips as it relates to art direction. Number one, arrive early, prepare and test. So in the case of a story that you want to pull off, maybe you have an idea for a two or three light setup. And if you're anything like me, I work with one light setups all the time. If you want to execute something that is outside of your usual practice, then arrive early, test your setup, test your idea so that you aren't fumbling around when it's go time. It is uncomfortable, so that's why we came out ahead of the couples because we want to keep this quick and get them to get out here, get the shot, and get them back inside. So that's what we're going to try to do. Bend the knee that's closer to me. Right. Bend it and put your arm underneath his. Come in close, but don't. Andrea, take that hand and move some of his locks away from his face. That's it. That's it. You're out of here. <laughs> this is where arriving early, preparing and testing will make it so that when you do bring them out, everything can be executed quickly and efficiently. Number two, all hands on deck. Sometimes you have an idea and you need extra hands to pull it off. In this series, for example, I wanted flying ponytails and there was no way that even one assistant could help to pull this off. I needed two people, two additional people to pull this off. And sometimes that's what it takes. Don't be afraid to ask for what you need. So this means that even if the people who are on set are not there to assist you, you everyone is invested. Anyone who's present at a, at a session is invested in the outcome being great. And so it never hurts to ask. Someone might say no and that's okay but it, you should always ask for what you need in order to pull your idea together. In the case of your client, ask for what you need from them. If you really do need them to, for example, wear comfortable shoes or bring an umbrella, what things do you need them to bring and what do you need them to do while, when they're in front of you on the lens? Ask them for what you need. Be specific, be detailed in your art direction. So it's not enough to just say, walk towards camera hand in hand. It's not enough to just say, give me a sultry look, give me a sultry gaze into the camera. It's not enough to say, look lovingly at each other. Well, be detailed in that direction. So if you want them to walk towards camera and you want it to be a sultry strut, then tell them what you need. Tell them walk foot over foot or extend and point your toe. If you want a sultry gaze into the camera, then Try a breathing exercise. One of the things I love to do is ask my clients to close their eyes, exhale, and slowly open their eyes to camera. This almost always results in a relaxed expression and a soft gaze that looks powerful and regal and sultry. If I want them to engage with each other and just have a moment and look into each other's eyes, maybe I'll ask them to do a staring contest. Whoever blinks first loses. Or I'll ask them to turn their faces to each, towards each other. And one of the things I like to do is have them close their eyes and brush their faces against each other. Look into each other's eyes can often om almost always pull out a reaction. Be detailed in what you need from your client. So if you can point your feet in the same direction, kind of widen your stance so that it feels comfortable. Like whether you need to bring your legs forward, you can bring one leg forward as long as your feet, yeah, that looks perfect. The next tip is to show them what you mean. So sometimes you'll give a directive and no matter how detailed it is, it's just not landing. It's just not what you 
are trying to convey to your client is not being received or it's not resonating. And sometimes you just have to demonstrate what you need. So I'm gonna sit on the couch and show Andrea because it might be hard to like, you might, maybe the client doesn't want you to touch them. So I'm gonna demonstrate. If you need your client to dance, maybe they, they might be willing, but they're not dancers. So give them, demonstrate a little something that they can do. Maybe you need them to sit in a certain way and they're sitting there, but there's just a little tweak that you need. So show them how you want them to sit. Show them what you mean. Demonstration is a great, we are visual creatures. It's, demonstration is just a great way to convey information as it relates to art direction. Distract. We touched on this earlier. There's so many tools that you can use for distraction, warm-ups, telling jokes. What was the first thing you noticed? Who, who like who? Approach to first. Uh, we don't want to do that. We're not doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Movement is one of my favorite things to do is to get the clients moving because it helps them to forget about the photography and immerse themselves in the experience. Fast, fast, fast. Distraction is a great tool to get your clients to let their guards top down and just be present. And you can use movement, but you can also use experience-based or activity-based things to distract your clients. So encourage them to bring things to their session. So that could look like bringing a ball or a jump rope or something that they can do, a deck of cards. This might not be the focal point of the session, but these are things that they can pull from, activities that they can do during the session that help them to forget about the portrait taking and be, just enjoy themselves. And my final tip number seven is to take a risk, but don't just take a risk, take calculated risk. And this is where the preparation and the arriving early comes in handy. Again, the information gathering comes in handy here. You'll know how your clients will, might potentially receive an idea, a, a risk taking idea. You Take those risks, but they are prepared for risk. And that is a wrap. This is where you can find me. I'm findable by name across all platforms. My website is keshalambert.com. On Instagram, I am at Kesha Lambert. Facebook, forward slash Kesha Lambert. I'm also on Twitter at Kesha Photo and YouTube. You can find me at Kesha Lambert Photography. Please keep in touch. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Sony for having me at the Creative Space. It has been an absolute pleasure.